All right, ladies and gentlemen, here we go into game number three. Let's head over there with Malice Morrow up against Lucky. So they are busting out Lucky in this game. It's going to be on Ohana. Top left-hand position, we have the purple Terran. See, he is Morrow. Player Morrow. Bottom right-hand position, we have the Zerg Lucky. Yep. And actually, for those who don't know, um, I don't know why one would not know this, but Morrow is actually living in Korea right now. He is staying at the uh, New Star, I don't know how to pronounce their name, NHSH house, uh, amongst other amazing players like Jockey and Seal and Sage and um, Tassadar. Am I mistaken? No, <laughs> That's the name for you. But yeah, no, Mara was sure. in Korea. He's been there for about two months right now, training really hard. Um, if you remember, he played in the Sunday Show match a couple weeks ago in, against Lenok and had some pretty amazing games. Probably one of the most amazing games we've seen in a long time. That like 55 minute game on, uh, what was the map, Andre? On? On uh, Metro Metropolis. Hmm? Metropolis. Metropolis, there we go. Yeah, Morrow's a really good player and lucky was the uh, IPL3 finalist. He ended up losing to Stefano, actually, in the finals. And yeah, Lucky is a really, really good player as well. So I'm excited for this match. Well, let's go ahead and check it out. It looks like a gas is going down for Terran. So Morrow is going for most likely a Reactor Hellion expand. In the meantime, Lucky is going for that hatchery first. Now, Lucky has been known to cheese. He is, um, he has been seen doing that in the NASTL. Maro, on the other hand, he is like, I hate to say it, but he is like the Idra version of, well, a, another brand, but an Idra version, uh, quite so. He loves to win games just in outplaying your opponents at that end game stage, going into macro mode and just playing more intelligent than your opponent with, you know, correct attacks, decision making. You saw. Uh, he was actually saying in his matches against Lenok that I won every single game that was a macro game, right? Antica Shipyard and Metropolis. Those were all macro games. The other games were uh, very, very short all-in games that they actually lost, or relatively short games. So um, his, his brand of style, he loves to go to that in-game stage, and we're going to see him probably look to go there on Ohana, play a very defensive brand of Terran, and from there, just, you know, regular, get the correct army composition for your opponent, outplay them. That's how he likes to win. Yeah, I agree. And again, as you mentioned about Lucky, um, I think him and Lenok and the other FXO Zerg players are really interesting because they have the ability to play the very standard game, but they also have these really kind of cheesy all-in aggression builds. That I mean, if you I mean, if you remember Lenok versus Naniwa on MLG, for example, um, I mean, Lucky has has that tendency as well. So when you're playing against this kind of a player, we don't really know what to expect. You know, you want to play as safe as humanly possible because, you know, what happens if he goes for the sick all in? But um, in the state of this clan war with FXO down zero two and the whole like rest of the clan war basically uh, resting on Lucky's shoulders. I can't imagine that he's going to go for like a super aggressive all-in build here because, you know, when you're in this position, you're back against the wall, and if you lose, you're done. Um, you want to kind of play your standard game. So I would expect him to kind of go for like the very standard Beetle Link Link kind of style. Yeah, I would expect that too. Also, Ling Roach, that type of uh, play works as well. But I think Mutaling Baneling works a lot better because you have these uh, multi directions in, in the map. Of course, you have the left hand side, you have the right hand side, uh, and right. potentially this middle, so you can always counter attack. There's always that option. Zergin's going to sprint up here. And are they actually and they're going to the scout that's third command center. I think that's kind of critical. Yeah, it definitely is. Obviously, it limits the options of his opponent. So definitely a big win there. Yep. Actually so what do you think about uh, Morrow? Sorry. Um, what do you think about Morrow getting this really early third command center, Andre? Um, do you? What are your thoughts about it? Do you think that it's a viable and good oh, option yeah. for Terran players to do this? It's definitely viable. We've seen it. Well, he did this every single game in the Morrow versus Lenox show match. Um, 
and it's it's been around for a while now. It's more of this well, it's more of the standard macro Terran type of style. Um, you do need these Hellions out in the field or else the creep threat is just going to be insane. So any pushes after that, um, right. or if you just wait with sea tanks and Marines, you'll have the creep threat expend all the way to your base. And then what happens is that they can just trade like crazy, go Master Green Baneling and then remax on Brood Lords and you're completely dead because you don't have the, uh, the economy really to deal with that. So. Um, that's why the Hellions are kind of important. I know that's kind of weird to say these Hellions back here actually save you from Broodlords at that edge game stage, but it's absolutely true. A lot of Terrans agree with that. Right. Yeah, that makes that definitely makes sense. And then now Morrow does have his third command center, but he's uh, going to be transitioning into something pretty normal and standard, which is, again, what he always does. He's going to go three barracks. He's getting a siege tank, siege mode. Uh, he's probably going to be starting a Stargate as soon as that third gas come up. And uh, Lucky's making a third hatchery as well. So again, both players uh, do see the, the layer coming down, Baneling Nest, so you're most likely going to be seeing the Baneling, Baneling style. I'm assuming this macro hatch is now done. Lucky is going to be taking that third base as soon as he deals with those pesky Hellions. And then, um, <clears throat> yeah, from there, we're just going to see a normal game. Yeah, I think Morrow, the big question is, is he up against um, Needlists or not? And from there, he can actually kind of prioritize. This is very standard to go double engineering base. When you're up against Mutas, this build actually counters Mutas very well. What you basically do is overproduce and overdevelop your ground army, which are those Marines, which are those siege tanks, and just prepare for that. And what this build actually has a little bit of a harder time, I think, up is against that fast upgrade style, but Muta Baneling Zergling is definitely going to be much better because you basically get your economy roaring. It is so large at this beginning stage. You get your upgrades really fast of 1-1. One, one. Normally, it's a 2-2 two, two timing that you hit, so it's going to be in quite a bit. Uh, what is that? Mm -hmm. 170 plus 220, I think? Is it 220 or 200? I can't remember. Or 190. Now I can't remember. Uh, I'll, I'll yeah. No, okay. I don't know. 190. We need we need we need a Great Torp spreadsheet to explain all these things. Okay, 170 plus 190. There you go. So it's 360. Six, yes. six minutes. Six minutes. That's the time. <laughs> There's a six <laughs> minute timing, okay? A 16 minute okay. timing for Morrow. You just watch. Sounds good, Andre. You just Sounds watch. Sounds good. Like my 21 minute You need minute to timing. you need to develop a 21 minute timing timing in StarCraft 2. <laughs> Anyways, so we do see that the Spire is nearly done. The third hatchery is still, uh, sorry, the third base from Lucky is still not even starting. He does have a third hatchery in his main base. Um, again, uh, this leads me to believe that we're going to see very, very aggressive play. Uh, you see a bunch of Zerglings coming across the map. Uh, 65 Zerglings, actually, and eight Banelings. So he could be trying to go for a Baneling bust at the third whilst he takes his own third and possibly even fourth base, which is something I, I think would be a pretty good idea for Lucky to do. But we're gonna have to see. So the first medevac from Morrow is now out. But Morrow's army size is not really that big. He has 28 Marines and just five tanks. So I think a really aggressive Baneling bus could actually do wonders for Lucky right now at the third base. Yeah, but unfortunately for Lucky, he's not going to hit before Stim finishes. Stim is just about 20 seconds away. Maybe he could, but it's going to be very improbable. Also, 1-1 one, one is about to finish, and these Zerglings are just 0-1. So that's kind of a bad position where, you know, they have that extra armor. And if these Siege Tanks can actually yep. target down the, uh, the Banelings, he'll be in a great position. You can see a perfectly placed bunker over here. That's uh, set off. Here we go. The big engagement has started. And Siege tanks are going to go down and try to target down the Banelings. He can't get a shot, though. And these Banelings might actually run into the bunker. Yes, they will. Take out the Marines in there. And wow, that is a lot of damage being done. But remember, he's only on three bases, or two bases, rather. The, the uh, Zerg is only on two bases. So everything gets cleaned up. A lot of trades are done here. In the end, let's go ahead and check it out. Morrow does have to clean things up, but I think he will be able to accomplish it, especially with his um, his upgrades. His upgrade. Yeah. You know, Lucky actually only killed uh, 12 SCVs in that entire engagement. That's actually not that much, but it looks like these Venus uh -oh. might be able to take down the command center if they're lucky. Uh, ha, see what I did there? Uh, but actually, they do not. 
uh, Mar, uh, sorry, Lucky is going to have to retreat. He actually uh, rallied all of his hatcheries over to that third base, but Morrow is going to be able to save that third base. And we do see a drop from Morrow coming up at the natural. Uh, gets taken out pretty easily. But again, Lucky doesn't have a third base. Um, so basically, Morrow, all Morrow has to do to get a huge advantage is just hold on and continue to weather the storm and then build up slowly. If you look at his main base, he's got a lot of production facilities. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight barrackses, two threes, and of course a starboard. And so Morrow has really good production, yeah. and he's got three bases. And so. he's got two two on the way. And once that two two hits, he's going to be in a great position. Again, another round of Zirkin Bailings and Mutas coming in here. He has to do additional damage because the third is up. And because the third is up and his uh, obviously Lucky's isn't, he has to keep going with this pressure. But once that 2-2 yep. hits, as you said, weather the storm for an additional 110 seconds. After that, you'll be absolutely great. Uh, and there you can intercept as many Zirkins as you want. And you're just like, what the hell is this? Stop tickling me. Yeah, um, exactly. Please. And the other thing is the fact that Lucky is sitting on two bases for so long means that those two bases are going to get mined out much more quickly. So even though he is going to get that third base up soon, the main and the natural are going to be mined out. So it's going to be like back to one base again. Oh, and again, a, oh wow, here comes a huge, huge attack incoming. Bust through the door of the natural. I think Lucky is going to want to go right into the main base, but his forces are split off between a group of Marines and his Beatles. And I'm. Yeah, okay, Lucky is just, just straight into the main base. He's going to try to kill a lot of... Oh, God. Okay, that was a huge blunder there by Lucky. Basically funneled all of his Banelings in a single line. Didn't kill any Marines in that. They're just a little bit weak, but... Although the third base is completely exposed now, so Lucky is going to try to swing around and take that out. Um, as you can see. There we go. This is going to directly on top of the super tanks, take all of them out, but a lot of losses have been suffered over here with the Mutas actually dying in great numbers and the Zergling Banelings actually being completely traded. And look at this, Morrow is just going to snap back. 2 2 has finished. Look at that 17 minute timing. Right when it actually yep. finished. Man, I am good. Man, I am good. But these, these Marines are basically god, god mode. And yep. do whatever the hell they want. They're going to go down to the third and probably deny this. I, I don't think that Lucky will be able to actually stop this. Maybe if he gets, like, a lot of really good juggling Baneling hits, or more so Baneling hits, but if he gets a lot of good Baneling hits, he'll be able to do maybe something. But I think if Morrow actually pushes forward, he'll be A-OK. -okay. He's actually going to back yeah. up. Um, I guess just he wants to compose himself. Of course, his third was damaged a little bit here and there. But now that he has it up again, he's yeah, absolutely Yeah, no, I mean, fine. he's... he's He's what? He's done a really good job, again, of just weathering the storm, and uh, he's probably going to be taking a fourth base, I would imagine, as he's pushing out. And again, Morrow's just wanting to be safe. You know, he doesn't want to push out hastily uh, and potentially lose the game, but again, I think his army is just so much stronger than Lucky's right now. Yeah, and look at the positioning that he's actually taking. Now, Lucky is going to have the, the uh, option to actually go counterattack once he has identified that what his opponent is doing. A nice turret ice, or sensor tower is actually being placed right over to make sure that he can... Oh, Banelings! Oh, God. He loses a ton of Banelings right there. It says Siege Tanks on the top. The third base is being shot down. Will it actually be targeted down? Yes, it will. And Lucky is just going to go in for the counterattack. He has no other option. What does he have at home? Morrow has a plenty, a lot of Marine siege tanks, all that stuff. All he needs to do is kill this one army from Lucky, and basically Lucky is completely dead. And yeah, it'll be pretty, pretty much over at that point. Unless Lucky can pull off some sort of uh, some miracle attack right now. Oh, goodness. And there goes all the Banelings. Banelings are actually being targeted down. The Marines are going to sprint forward. There's a ton of Marines actually in production right here. A lot of the Banelings splash upon the wall, the siege, or not siege tanks, um, supply depot wall. And again, the Banelings are just going to be suicided into a very small little choke, and that's it. There's the Banelings and Zerglings, the majority of Banelings and Zerglings, I should say. 3-3 three, three on the way, and I don't think Lucky can do anything at this point because the upgrades of Mara are just way too good. Lucky sitting at 1-1, I do believe, for the ground, whereas Morrow approaching that 3-3 in just about 180, or excuse me, just 80 seconds. Right. And you know, I noticed that Lucky actually doesn't have any upgrades on the Pulis, which is 
pretty big. I mean, most people generally will get either the, the uh, you know, armor upgrade and or the attack upgrade for their Beetalisks to make them much more potent, especially when you're, you know, specifically going Beetling main lane. But, you know, his units are just so unupgraded that, yeah, I there mean, Lucky is. can't really do anything. And Faust takes it in a clean sweep, 3-0. Very surprising uh, ending to this clan war. I think everybody actually favored FXO going into this scene as they are the NASTL undefeated team uh, this week. But I guess this week is the, yep. <laughs> the week of where all the, uh, I guess, favorites are going to be eliminated. Uh, not eliminated, but yeah. beaten. Uh, we have Empire taking their first loss this week and also FXO taking their first loss this week in the NASTL. They're still the head of the pack, but what that basically means is they're all going to be sandwiched these later weeks. The si week six, week seven are are going to be the weeks that actually decide who's going to make it into the NASTL playoffs. That's pretty big, yeah. and it's going to be uh, it's going to be close. Yeah, there's actually no clear front runners right now, and I think that's that that's going to make the end of the season really exciting, because right now you have you know FXO and Empire, and Liquid are all tied at four one now. Um, then you have Maus who's sitting at three two, and then um, Rain who has fallen to two three Rocks, who has. I think Liquid lost this, this week. Two, They're actually three, three and uh, two series. Who? I think Liquid actually Rain? lost this week. Liquid, liquid. Liquid? Yeah. No. Did they're they? four one. Mm. Yeah, they're four one for sure. Okay. Right? Uh I don't think so. I don't think so. They're three and two. But yeah, uh they are. trust trust me, man. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to get odds right. on you later. But, um, yeah, uh, as you said, and I don't know what's going to go up with Rain. Obviously, you guys know at home that uh, Rain actually disbanded. So hopefully they can actually keep going. I would love their players to just keep going in the NASTL. Yeah, but only, so. only time will tell. But that being said, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do it. After this is going to be the Sunday Show Match Series. So definitely stay tuned for that. It's going to be uh, casted by myself. You know who's going to be casting that? And a Night End. Night End is going to be casting that. Yeah. That's going to be awesome. So My best buddy, man. Night End is awesome. Really, really cool. Night End is a, a great, great guy. Uh, if you didn't know, he is actually a vampire from Romania, Transylvania, actually. And he's going to be busting face. Uh, so really looking forward to that. Stay tuned for that. But for those of you that are uh, going to end right here, thank you so much for tuning in. We are actually going to... Uh, yep. Well, no, we're going to go to the show match series. We want to thank our sponsors. Yeah, we're going to the show match. We want to thank, thank our sponsors. sponsors. I'd love to thank our sponsors. Son of a B. Sure. Azo. Well, thank you. To Cooler Master, I got this man. I got this. Cooler Master, of course. Kingston Hyper X, where we've been giving away gig, uh, 60 gigabyte flash drives and stuff. Um, and of course, Azo Monitors for being the monitor providers for the NASL. And of course, we do have that awesome Azo Monitor giveaway. So tweet at and follow and like Azo USA on Twitter and Facebook and everywhere else. And last but not least, I'd love to thank I Buy Power for being the system sponsor for the NASL. And, of course, Beyond Gaming, who have a pretty awesome new application. Andre, do you want to tell people about that? Go over to www.beyondgaming.com slash page slash BG link. That's where you can find out more information about that. What it basically is is a desktop app that allows you to connect to your friends. Uh, all your replays can be, obviously, interchanged between you guys, and you can train a lot better. And let me tell you that that's the best way to train with a team, with a group of people. And it's gonna be um, it's gonna be awesome. I think I'm definitely gonna look into it and see if it's gonna be great. So, yeah. Zaries, I'm yeah. gonna go ahead and uh, I'll leave you really quick. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank so you, Andre. You, yep. All right. Well, that being said, ladies and gentlemen, that's gonna do it for today. You noticed that I did not give Zaries a shout out because he was a big jerk to me, he cut me off at that end stage. But uh, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Stay tuned. Next up is the Sunday Showmatch series, and I'm so excited. I'm wiggly, wiggly.